If you want to become a manifesting powerhouse, if you want to live in a world where the dreams in your heart come into your reality quickly and easily without struggle, without stress, without wondering, will this ever happen? Will I ever get this love and relationship that I desire? Will I ever have abundance and more than enough? Or will I live in lack all of my life? If you ever had a dream, one that matters, you want to manifest it, manifest it easily? Well, my friend, this video is just for you. Today, you're about to learn the three steps that you need to focus on so that you can become a manifesting beast. We're starting right now. So buckle up, it's bound to be a good one. Come on, let's kick straight on into it. Well, hello folks and welcome to Elevate for a New Day. My name is Ben and gee, I love spending this time with you. To all of the beautiful, faithful souls that leave wonderful comments, just know how much I appreciate you. Thank you for being part of the community. And if you're not subscribed, why don't you go and hit the subscribe button? Join the community that we're building here. You know I'm here seven days a week, folks, and you can reach out to me anytime. But today, today is all about becoming a manifesting powerhouse. It's about being in flow with the universe, not just in flow with the universe, but in flow with yourself, your higher self, in flow with your dreams and your goals and your ambitions and the secret desires locked deep inside of your heart. Maybe the dream's so big that you haven't even told anybody about it. That dream, my friend, can be your reality. But there's a few things that you need to focus on to work through and to master before it will happen. And today is good news. If you found this video, it's for a reason. You're coming into alignment with your due season. So let's get you sorted out and see you marching forward towards that promised land. There are three key areas that make all of the difference when it comes to manifesting a dream. And the very first area is that of your own inner work. Now bear with me. This one might seem a bit esoteric, but gee, it's powerful. So many of us, we, we want to become the master of everybody else's inner work, don't we? we? We have this inner critic, and while the inner critic criticizes ourselves, it also criticizes everybody else. It criticizes that person who held you up at the traffic lights, how dare they? It criticises that person at the shops who's not wearing any deodorant and you can smell them from two aisles away. What's wrong with that person? Why don't they have a shower? It criticises the person who served you at the shop, who's having a bad day, who's fumbling around and getting things mixed up. Boy, that cashier was slow. What's the matter with them? It criticises the person at the restaurant who spills their drink. What's wrong with these people? We're supposed to be living in a society here. It criticizes everyone and everything. That inner critic, we've got to start reining in and recenter the focus inwards. You see, what you focus on inwards pours outwards. This is why what you focus on expands. If you focus on your own inner work, don't worry about the smelly person three hours away. Don't worry about that person who just spilt their drink at the restaurant. Don't worry about the person who held you up at the traffic lights. You focus on you because your dream is worth it. Your dream is worth the inner work. See, we get distracted. It's a trick that the mind plays on us. It's a trick of the human experience. The scripture talks about how the flesh and the spirit are constantly at odds. It's the human experience and the spirit that constantly get in the way of each other. The human experience provides so much white noise that the still small voice of the spirit, as the scripture calls it, cannot be heard. And while you're at the shops being upset about that smelly person or the bad service you received or the fact you can't get a car park, and you're consumed with this inner conversation, 
It drowns out the still small voice of the Spirit. This is why we have to turn the focus back inwards and focus on our own inner work, which dovetails in nicely with the second point of focus for you to execute, to become the manifesting powerhouse you were born to be, and that is that of beginning to follow your path of inner peace. Do you know that a lot of people reach out to me and they tell me things they're going through and they ask for advice, particularly when it comes to manifesting a dream. And that's fair enough. We all have dreams and we all want to make them manifest. But did you know the fastest way to your dream, to your promised land, is by following your path of inner peace? So many of us, we try to follow the example that has been set by another. Or we try to follow the path and the trail that's been blazed by another. People say, oh look, that person got the result I want. How did you do that? Let me, let me follow in your footsteps. Oh, that person, they've, they've had the success I want. Come, let me follow. How did you do it? No, folks. What works for him and what works for her may not work for you. This is why you have to be in touch with your inner person. This is why you have to know what your path of peace is. You have to follow it. And you have to faithfully and diligently plod along, putting one foot in front of the other. Oftentimes when people ask me, Ben, can you give me an affirmation I should use to lose some weight like you've done? Can you give me a technique that I should use to get this result or that? I always say to them, it's not about the technique. It's not about the affirmation. It's about following your path of inner peace. It's about spending enough time with yourself, listening to your inner conversations, and allowing the space to hear the still small voice. It's about getting away from the white noise of life and being okay, being alone with your thoughts. Because when you start to develop some stillness and some space on the inside, what you are doing is giving space to the voice within. The voice within, the still small voice, is the voice that guides you through your path of peace. That's the voice they talk about in the 23rd Psalm where they say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. It's the still small voice that leads you to the still waters, that leads you to the green and prosperous and fruitful pastures. But while you are so obsessed with everyone else and everything else and the white noise of life and going here and being there, never being still and present with your own thoughts, there is no space for you to be guided by your inner peace. Now I know that when you first start to sit down and spend time with your thoughts, it can be a little bit trying. The rate at which thoughts come into the mind is seemingly so thick and fast that for a lot of us, we're afraid to be alone with those thoughts. You know, I spent years of my adult life not able to go to sleep without the TV playing quietly in the background. And I thought that this was just an unusual thing that I went through. But having studied for my degree in counselling and having gotten alongside lots of people, it's incredible that so many, they can't go to sleep without a podcast playing, without some music playing, without something quietly in the background. And what that is, is the distraction that drowns out the still small voice. You have to wade through all of the thoughts that come into your mind and learn to observe them. Not just interact with them, but just observe them. Allow them to be there. They can't hurt you. When you do that, you make space for the inner voice. And it is the inner voice that leads you down your path of peace. When you get in the zone with this inner voice, when you do your own inner work, when you focus on where you're going, not where you've been, not all of the things that have gone wrong, but where you're going. Then the third step to becoming a manifesting powerhouse takes care of itself. You see, the law of attraction is not about getting what you want. 
It's not about going out there and making it happen. It's about making it welcome. You cannot force the hand of the universe to deliver something to you that you are not ready for. It's the inner work and following your path of peace that prepares you for your promised land. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard me say it. The law of attraction doesn't give you what you want. It gives to you who you are. It gives to you a reflection of your core vibration. You don't attract what you want. You become attractive and it flows towards you. So if you live in a world of turmoil, it's because you are attractive to that. If you live in a world of dysfunction, it is because somehow you have become attractive to that dysfunction. That's okay. Don't beat yourself up. We all go through it. You've heard the stories of my life and all of the dysfunction that compounded for years and led to a massive nervous breakdown. But from that, from those ashes, from the ruins and the wreckage, look what has arisen. The true me, the Ben I was always supposed to be, living in my promised land. The same can be for you. Focus on your inner work. Follow your path of peace. And concentrate on making that dream welcome. Concentrate on being the person where that dream says, I want to go and reside with them. That relationship says, I want to come and be in relationship with them. That money says, wow, I want to go and be in their bank account. Focus on making it welcome. If you will follow these three steps, and each and every day be diligent in listening for your inner voice, in following the path of peace, working on what you need to work on to come up higher, work on the frustration, work on the root of bitterness, the unforgiveness, work on the hurt, work on the abandonment issues. Just take one step every day. And soon enough, when you look at the steps you've taken, you will see they've led you straight into the gates of your promised land. Folks, I know it's true. I'm the proof. You can do it too. And if you want to know more of the moving steps, go and check out either of these two videos. They're going to help you get there. But make sure you're subscribed because that's all I have time for today, folks. Come and see me again tomorrow. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below so we can have a chat. I love you. Peace.